In order to design your projects, you'll need a set of components to work with. Earlier in this guide, we used the provided components from Altium 365 that were already created. Although the integration of Octopart with Altium Designer gives us a large repertoire of components, you simply can't have access to every component in the world. So we're going to create our own component in the Altium 365 workspace. The first thing to do is make sure that you're connected to your Altium 365 workspace. After that, go to the File menu, select New, and select Component. The first component we're creating is a USB connector, so we'll select Connector as the component type. This will store it in the proper folder in the workspace so that it's easy to find later on. Let's click OK to continue. The component editor will open where it can be broken down into two main regions. The left side is where you'll populate information about the component and the right side will show all of the models associated to it. Now if you wanted to create a generic component, you could start filling out the information manually. If you have a real world part in mind, just click on the triple dot icon in the name field and it'll open the manufacturer part search panel. For this scenario, we already have a manufacturer part number that we want to use. In the search field, enter the USB part number as we're showing here and hit enter. Now depending on your filter criteria and supplier settings, you may have different results than what we're showing. When you have a part selected, you can see the component's details on the right side of this panel. We can see that it has quite a few parameters, but there's no symbol or footprint. That's okay because we'll be creating our own shortly. We'll select the Amphenol part and click OK to load this information into the component editor. Now we can start creating the models. The schematic symbol can be created manually or by using the symbol wizard. So let's click on the wizard button below the add symbol icon to get started. We'll change the number of pins to 12 and we'll use the layout style drop down to select single inline. The table below is used to populate the names and other information about the pins of the symbol. Go ahead and assign the pin names and electrical types as shown here. The name can be changed by double clicking on the cell and the type by using the drop down menu. After clicking OK, the symbol will open in the library editor. This will allow you to make any changes that were not possible directly from the symbol wizard. Let's select all of the pins using a selection rectangle, open the properties panel if it's not already open, and change the pin length to 200 mils. Remember that you can toggle between metric and imperial using the control Q shortcut keys. In the font settings region of this panel, enable the custom settings boxes for both the designator and name. From here, we'll change both fonts to Arial. You may notice that there's a black crosshair in the center of the symbol editor. This is used as a reference point and this is where your cursor will attach to the component whenever you go to place it into a design. So feel free to select everything and move the component so that the first pin is on the crosshair. You can use the G key to change the grid size to properly align it. We can now save and close this symbol editor to return to the component editor. We'll also save the entire component as well. If you wanted to save this component to the workspace right now, you could right click on it from the projects panel and save to server. But since we'll be adding a footprint to this component in a later video, just leave this tab open for now.